please be seated in heavenly places. The only reason why we are gathered here and people are gathered all over the world today, ladies and gentlemen, is because something happened on Friday. Something happened on Good Friday. And the enemy had forgotten that Sunday was going to come. The people that crucify him had forgotten that Sunday was going to come. Hell and all the powers of the dark kingdom rejoice. They nailed him to the cross. They had forgotten that Sunday will come. They rejoice because they had forgotten that Sunday will come. They buffet him because they had forgotten that Sunday will come. If the princes of this world have known what will happen on Sunday, they wouldn't have tortured him on Friday. He bled in the garden of Gethsemane. They had forgotten that Sunday will come. They nailed him to the cross and they thought they had the upper hand, but they had forgotten that Sunday will come. Ladies and gentlemen, thank God for Sunday. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and thank God for Sunday. It doesn't matter what you are going through and what you are dealing with right about now. May I announce to you that your resurrection shall come. The resurrection is the triumph. The resurrection was the vindication. The resurrection gave us the upper hand that the powers of the dark kingdom were not smart enough. As much as the enemy think he's smart, and as much as he think he may have the victory or the upper hand, it's a joke. It's a joke because the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Are you hearing me, somebody? It was prophesied 700 years before his death, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, and ascended. 700 years before it was prophesied. And all hell could not stop it. It was written in the book. They knew about it. They maneuvered. They tried everything to stop his birth. And even when he was born, they tried to eliminate all children under the age of two years to make sure that he wouldn't make it. But ladies and gentlemen, the wisdom of God preserved him. And that same wisdom of God will preserve you. If you believe it, say yes. You know, you are, you are, you are a wonder. You can ask your mother, she will tell you what, what she went through when she took seed of you. That all hell broke loose. The enemy threw everything at your pregnancy to make sure you won't be here. But heaven said no. The decree of heaven must come to pass. Say yes. Let's talk a little bit about the benefits, some of the benefits of the resurrection. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians the 15 chapter and the 14 verse. And if Christ be not risen, mm -hmm. then is our preaching vain, mm -hmm. and your faith is also vain. So he said, if Christ did not rise, if he didn't rise, if the resurrection wasn't true, which is true, then our preaching is vain, and our faith is vain. Many, 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 many leaders went to the grave but he did not come back. But he went to the grave and he came back. He arose. Aren't you glad that your Lord and your master rose? He came out of the dead. He's not dead. So one of the benefits of Christianity and of our faith and our preaching is the fact that he went to the grave and he came back on the third day. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. He's the one that said, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it back again. So one of the things that happened by his resurrection, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that he kept his promise. Tell somebody he kept his promise. Tell somebody else he keeps his promise. Aren't you glad that your Lord, your Savior, your Master keeps his promise? He said, I will lay down, I have the power to lay down my life and in three days I will raise it up again. And it was exactly so. On the third day, he came out of the grave.
the first day, the second day, hell believed that they had won. And they were celebrating triumph over the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there come a time in all of our lives when it looks like we are losing the battle. When it looks like the enemy is winning. And I have been in some situation. This weekend I dealt with some very interesting situation. Up to three this morning I was still awake dealing with some situations. And sometimes it just looks like the enemy have the upper hand. And the enemy will throw all scriptures at you. And bring back every prayer you pray to make you feel like you know something you are wasting your time. But ladies and gentlemen, on the first day, it looked like all hope was gone. On the second day, it looks like it wasn't going to happen. But on the third day, the father stood up in heaven and said to the angel, go down and bring my son. And they had the tomb seal with the seal of the empire of Rome and had soldiers armed all over the tomb and there was a seal on the tomb to make sure that he will not come back. To make sure that his word or promise will not be kept and honored. But when the time came and the father said it's time to bring back my son. Everything the enemy had put in place. The angel came and said I am overriding it all. Are you hearing me somebody? And he went down to hell. We will get there. He went to hell to preach to the prisoners of death. And those who died during the time of the flood, in the days of Noah and Moses and the others who didn't believe in the Son of God, he went to preach to them and he set them free and took captivity captive. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. He came back again. I declare unto you that any promise of God in your life and over your life after this resurrection Sunday it shall come to pass don't give up don't quit don't doubt God because the trick of the adversary is to get you to question the integrity of God's word he wants you to doubt God the reason for procrastination in the life of believers is because of doubt and unbelief but if you believe, you will not procrastinate. You will take action immediately. Tell somebody, take action, take action. Amen. He kept his promise. Number two, the price of your freedom, my freedom, the price of your redemption is paid. The price is paid. May I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that you don't owe the devil anything because the price is paid. You cannot be held a ransom by the powers of the dark kingdom anymore because he paid the price with his blood. And when he rose from the dead, he sealed it with the resurrection. Are you hearing me, somebody? See, I hear you. He paid the price. Romans chapter 1 verse 4 And declared to be the son of God with power mm -hmm. According to the spirit of holiness By the resurrection from the dead He rose from the dead So death has no power over us It has no power over us I want those of you who are being threatened by the spirit of death Having strange dreams and projections And it looks like the enemy is on your case May I submit to you that it's, it's threatenings. These are threatenings and intimidation. But the, the truth of the matter is that he has no power over you. If you are excited about that, put your hands together and thank God that the price is paid and he has no power over you. John chapter 11 verse 25. John chapter 11 verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Aren't you glad and excited that your Lord and your Savior is the resurrection and he is the life? Amen. Somebody put your hands together. Thank God that he's the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. The other thing that he did 
as benefits to you and I by his resurrection is the fact that he has broken the power over sin, death, and hell, and the grave by his resurrection. Every power the enemy had or hold the enemy had over you and I by the way of sin and death, hell, and the grave through his resurrection, he broke the power of the enemy. So even though sometimes you might struggle with sin, you might struggle with the fear of death and struggle with the fear of hell and of the grave, the truth of the matter is that by his resurrection, he broke the hold of the enemy that you and I can be free from the power of sin, death, and of hell, and the grave, and the last thing he did was to break the hold of the enemy over planet Earth. Are you hearing me, somebody? Put your hands together and give God praise for that. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews 2 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Through death, through his death, that he might destroy him that had power over death. Aren't you excited? That dying gave him an advantage over death. May I announce to you that whatever struggle you are going through right now, through that struggle, God is giving you upper hand and dominion over that situation. I'm telling you, you are going to come out victorious on the winning side at the end of the day by the time this situation is through. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It don't matter what you are going through. I came to submit to you just as Jesus went through trying times and difficult times and it looks like the enemy had won and had the victory at the end of the day. The truth of the matter is that Jesus had the upper hand and you shall also have the upper hand at the end of the day if you believe it say yes yeah. hallelujah uh, come with me look at the book of revelation chapter 1 verse 18 establishing that he had power over death the grave and hell he has he had it and he got it by dying going through the process Allowing himself to be subjected to a situation where everybody thought he had failed. And it was shame. It was shameful. It was a mockery at that time. But the Bible said he despised the shame. And every now and then you and I must learn to despise shame. We must learn to despise the mockery of man. We must learn to overlook shame. And act like nothing is going on, even though you're going through something. Are you hearing me, somebody? These days when people call me and say, hey, Pop, how you doing? I said, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. And they keep calling me these days, Mr. Wonderful. And I was dealing with a situation the other day, and one of my bishops, he knew exactly what I was dealing with. And he came to me and said, Papa, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing wonderful. And he said, how can you be doing wonderful when you are dealing with such a situation? I said, I'm doing wonderful. I'm not going to allow my circumstances to detect and determine my direction and the confession of my faith. Is anybody hearing me? Don't allow your present and your temporal setbacks to determine your future. Don't allow it. Don't let what you are going through today define the outcome of your future. Don't let present circumstances detect and determine the outcome of your future. I'm telling you. Because your future is bright. Come on, tap somebody and say, your future is bright, your future is bright. I can see your future. It's bright. It's better than where you are right now. If God can show you just two, three years of your life, and what is ahead of you, your whole attitude about life will change. The way you treat people will change. You should hear my message on Wednesday. Don't curse yourself. So many people have cursed themselves. Some of you believe there's a problem with your nose, your tie, your leg, your right eyes, ear, this, that. 
but there's nothing wrong with you. You know why there's nothing wrong with you? You are wonderfully and fearfully made. I don't care what you think about your body and yourself. I believe in what the word of God says. Are you hearing me? One of my spiritual father, Derek Prince, said that the wife, his second wife, had a problem with her leg, one of her legs. And she always complains about it. So one time they were sitting at the beach and she held the leg and said, Father, I thank you that this leg is beautiful, it's nice. And he started praising God and thanking God about the deformed leg. After that, everything disappeared. And it became beautiful again. You are wonderful. Tell somebody, tell two people, do you know you are wonderful? Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. Even though they don't believe it, you see the way they are looking at you. They don't believe you are talking to them. They think you are talking to somebody else. But tell them, I'm talking to you, Mr. Wonderful, Madam Wonderful, you. I'm talking to you. You're wonderful. Because, you know, one day, one day I'll tell you a little bit of this. One day, the angels went to God. They were so confused about you. I'm talking about you. Tell somebody, you. You confuse the angels. You marvel them. They don't understand who you are. They went to God and said, God, can we ask you a question? And the father said, yes, what is it? And they said, what is man? What is this thing called man that you are so mindful of him? Who is this? What is man? I'll tell you the rest on Wednesday. So let's move on. Revelation 1.18 I am he that liveth, yet yes. was dead. Uh -huh. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Uh -huh. Amen. He and said, I have the keys of hell yes. and of death. Uh -huh. He said, I was alive. And I had to die and go down there and seize and recover and take possession of the keys of hell and of death. I declare after this resurrection Sunday, next week Sunday by now, you would have taken possession of your possession. You would have taken possession of the keys to your breakthrough, the keys to your blessing, the keys to your healing, the keys to your deliverance, the keys to the deliverance of your children, the keys to the deliverance of your business, the keys to the recovery of your stolen goods and every wasted years of your life. Next week Sunday about now you would have taken possession of the keys are you hearing me somebody if you believe it put your hands together give God a shout in the house he said I was alive but I died then I had to but he said behold I'm alive and I ain't dying again I only went down there to take something that belongs to you and the keys over hell and death that was in the possession of the enemy Jesus went there and took possession of it so it's not in the hands of the enemy anymore he can't determine your death the powers of darkness can attempt they can try the only thing that gives them power over you is sin but thank God that the hold of sin is broken in the name of Jesus I said the hold of sin is broken in the name of Jesus and he cannot sin cannot have dominion over you anymore anymore not permanently you can be tempted every now and then and the Bible said the righteous fall at seven times and he rises up again so if you have fallen get up come somebody and say get up amen uh, first Corinthians 15 and verse 54 to 57 so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality mm -hmm. then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory mm -hmm. O death where is thy sting mm -hmm. O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you thank God for the victory over sin, over death, and over hell through Jesus Christ? Come on, somebody. This is a good place to open your mouth and to give thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for power and victory over sin, death, and of the grave. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. 
Hallelujah. By his resurrection, he gave us newness of life. Are you hearing me? That the Bible says, as your days, so shall thy strength be, that your youth is renewed day after day. Say yes. If you look at yourself in the mirror, and you'll be true to yourself in the light of the word of God, you realize that you are not aging. Some of you, you are reversing aging. You are reversing aging. I can, I, can, I can ask one or two people to stand right now and ask them of their age. And if they tell you their age, they'll blow your mind. You won't believe it. And you see their siblings and friends and loved ones, younger than them, aging. You know what is going on? The spirit is renewing your life. It's a resurrection life. You are being renewed day after day. Hallelujah. I renew your youth like the eagles. Aren't you excited about that? Put your hands together and give God praise for that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and the 17 verse. 2 Corinthians 5 and the 17 verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he's a new creature. You're a new creature. Tell somebody you're a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, mm -hmm. all things are become new. Hallelujah. So the promise, look at... Um, Look at Romans 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 9. Romans 6, 3 to 9. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also you walk in newness of life. Newness of life. You are walking in a new life. The life you have right now is a new life. It's not the old one. Let the resurrection remind you. You see, before Jesus died, they called him Jesus of Nazareth. They called him the son of the carpenter. But when he rose on the third day, they didn't call him Jesus of Nazareth. They called him the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me, somebody? By the power of his lordship, walk in newness of life henceforth. Walk in the benefits of the resurrection in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Hallelujah. Come to John 2, 19. John 2, 19. John 2, 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Amen. Psalm 16 and the 10 verse. Psalm 16 and the 10 verse. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, mm -hmm. neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. He didn't see corruption. On the third day, before corruption set in, he rose. And you shall also rise. You shall rise. You have to believe it. That because he rose, you will also rise. And because he lived, you shall also live. I've been in a lot of situations where the enemy literally came at me. And it was like, you are finished. And I just have to whisper and say, you are joking. Because he lived, I shall live also. Oh yeah. Because he lived, I shall live also. And the enemy has no rights whatsoever to detect and to determine the outcome of your life. Your life is in his hands. Your future is in his hands. Just serve God. Serve him. Don't live for yourself. Live for Jesus. Live for the ministry. Work for God. Do something with your life and the resources, the influence, the access, the opportunity, everything and the time that God is giving. Use it for God. Use it for his glory. Don't live for yourself. Because God said, I will spare those who serve me. Tell somebody, serve the Lord. Oh, come on, tell somebody, serve the Lord. Amen. First Corinthians 15 and 4. 15 and 4. Just and to remind you of these scriptures. Amen. Go ahead. And that he was buried, mm -hmm. and that he rose again the third day, mm -hmm. according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. It was prophesied 700 years before that he will die, he will be crucified, he will die, he will be buried. Even where he will be buried, 
the grave in which he was buried, it was all prophesied. And the devil couldn't stop it. But he tried, but he couldn't stop it. And he will also try. He will attempt to come at you and your children, your loved ones, your family. But may I announce to you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Say yes. Okay, come with me to Matthew, the 27th chapter, verse 52 and 53. Write down these scriptures because you need to meditate on them over and over again. You will need them one of these days when the enemy comes at you. You need to remind him of the scriptures. Go ahead. And the graves were opened, mm -hmm. and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, uh -huh. and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. When he rose, many came out of their graves, many that were dead under the Old Testament before him. When he came out of the grave, when the Bible said he led captivities captive, all of them that were dead also came out of the grave. I've been to Jerusalem many a time. Those graves are still empty up to now. Yeah, you go there, you see the grave of David, King David, Solomon, so many of the Old Testament saying their, their tombs are there, but they are not there. And the tomb of Jesus is there, but he's not there. Are you hearing me, somebody? Aren't you excited that you serve a God and a king who has power not to keep you only here, but even life after? He has the power to keep you. You will not be left in your grave. You will come out when the trumpet is sound in heaven with the shout of the ark of the angel. The dead in Christ shall rise and mortals shall put on immortality. Aren't you glad and excited about that? If Christianity is all about here and life, then we are to be pitied among all men. But life is more than just being here. Life is bigger than living. The real living is hereafter. Because this is temporal. That one is permanent. And nobody must compromise, allow anything to stop you from being with Jesus hereafter. Because you are not flesh and blood. You don't know me. You've never seen me before. You think you know me? You don't know me. What you are seeing is not me. This is my earthly habitation and vessel. The real me is the one you are hearing speaking out of this body. So you are not flesh and blood. The real you is the inside of you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yet this body will be preserved. When you serve him, it shall be preserved. On that day, it's a glorious moment. And when everything is over and you've used the time and resources given to you by him for his glory and you check out at the right time, you will check out at the right time, not on the wrong time. You know, one thing that really encourages me is Nana Amangwa, David Amangwa, when I saw how he lived and loved the Lord and died at the age he passed, he was over 90 years, 92, huh? 92 years and saw the way he went long life is possible but it's also living for god that is the most important thing and serving the lord i see you living long and all the things you are not doing for god right now i declare you begin to do it after today your life will bring god glory say yes you believe it colossians 2 13 and 14 and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, mm -hmm. have he quickened together with him? Somebody say quicken, quicken. The quicken here is lifted up or resurrected, resurrected. Tell somebody you are being resurrected this morning. I see a resurrection coming for somebody. Amen. Go ahead. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Yes. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, mm -hmm. which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Amen. Your transgression, your sins, iniquities are forgiven. Receive forgiveness of every sin, forgiveness and pardon and exemption from the consequence of sin, iniquity and transgression. Say amen. 
Let's look at Acts chapter 1 and the ninth to the eleventh verse. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye, up, stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. That is one of the benefits of resurrection that he, he will come again. Tell somebody he's coming again. You know, I never thought when I was a young Christian that I would ever pray the prayer Maranatha. Even so, Lord Jesus, come now. I never thought I will pray that prayer. But as I look at the world and the way things are going, the events of the time, and all the things that are going on in the nations of our world, like never before, my spirit keeps crying out, come, Lord Jesus, come now. Even so, Lord Jesus, come now. I believe the only solution and the answer to the challenges of the world is the return of the Lord Jesus. And the fact that it was prophesied 700 years, his death, resurrection, burial, and ascension, and it has all come to pass, may I submit to you, whether you believe it or not, that Jesus, whom we serve, is coming back again. Can you put your hands together and thank God that he's coming back again? Yes, he's coming back again. And that has nothing to do with whether you believe it or you don't believe it. But for believers, you and I must understand the fact that it does not matter what happens. The fact that he came the first time and died to fulfill prophecy. And on the third day, he arose and ascended. He's coming back again for his church. He's coming back again for you and I. And we got to keep it in mind because the only thing, you know, a young man came to see me the other day and he said, Papa, I'm really struggling with my flesh. And I'm a good Christian, but I, I struggle a lot with it. And, and he said, I prayed, I fasted, I confessed all scriptures, I've done everything. And I said, the only way to stay pure is to keep reminding yourself that Jesus is coming back again for you. And I said, if you lose sight of that, your flesh will take over. And the Bible said, he that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. That is the only thing that will keep us sanctified. That is the only thing. It doesn't matter who you are. If you take your eyes off the fact that Jesus is coming again, if you forget that he's coming again, you begin to sink. It's the only thing that keeps us all, including myself, the hope of his coming. And the devil will do everything to make us forget that Jesus is coming again. But the only thing that keeps us pure, he that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. That is the only thing that will keep you sanctified. If you lose sight of the fact that Jesus is coming again, you will lose your sanctification and purity. And the devil wants us to live and believe that life is just about here. And after here, that is it. It's a joke. It's a life. He's coming again. And I want you to keep believing and keep saying that my Lord is coming again. As long as you hold on to that, it will keep you pure, sanctified, straight. It will remind you that you just can't live anyway, anyhow. It will help you to live pure. He that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. When you lose sight of that, you will go under. How many of you believe he's coming again? Then say, 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 I believe Jesus is coming again. I believe he's coming for me. Tell somebody, Jesus, tell somebody, I want to remind you that Jesus is coming back for you. He's coming back for you. He's coming back for you. So prepare yourself. He's coming back for you. He's not coming back for the trees, for gold and diamond. He's coming back for you. So you got to get ready. Like a bride, you're going to get married. Your wedding is coming. It's Friday. The wedding is Saturday. You better get ready. Tell somebody, get ready. Sunday is coming. Tell somebody, today is Friday. Sunday is coming. 
get ready your groom is coming for you he's coming for you no wrinkle no spot on your dress and if we lose sight of that then we are just living as ordinary mere christians just living trusting god to bless us do business make money live a good life you are to be pitied he has to go beyond living a good life he's living for god and preparing for him because he's coming again this morning will you lift up your hands and say god i repent for being discouraged i repent for being hurt for being offended for the good i do no man and woman is my rewarder you are my shield and my rewards come from you help me to understand that so i bear no man grudge that i'm not offended about anybody but i walk in love towards all men because you love and care for people and that is what you require of me i repent for my ignorance forgive me father this day i promise i walk in your love i will love people without expecting anything from them i will love them because they are your children they are god's children and i'll love them no matter what they do to me right and wrong if they remember me and show gratitude is good and if they don't it's also good because i am honored to play the role you've called me to play in the church and in the life of others i thank you amen is it a good prayer it's a good prayer eh? yeah yeah it's a good prayer a lot of people who hurt me even pastors prophets bishop they come around and i say hey 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 i don't hold anything up against you get up get up get up i'm man, i'm a man like you and i don't feel any pain and sometimes some of my security they ask me papa how do you do this because they know what they've done and you let them come into your office, meet them somewhere, don't let them, and somebody will say, so, so, and so, he said, he wants to see you. Where do you want to meet him? Downstairs, or you want, and I said, bring him to my office. And they are surprised. Why do you bring them to your office? You have to meet them. I said, listen, you don't understand my calling. I was living at a place called Wapani, Dondoli, Jejerehiri, at Wa. I used to sell graphics and push straw and sell PK up Opera Square and God picked me from the Marie clay, from the map, set my feet on the rock, did something with me and you think I have the right? You think I have the right to be offended? Tell somebody you and you don't have the right to be offended so stop being offended. You have no right being offended. You don't. And that was what God made me to understand that you, you have no right to be offended. Have you ever been to Dondoli before? Anybody knows where Dondoli is or Wapane? There's one person here who knows Dondoli, Dondoli. Who else knows Dondoli? Somebody at Dondoli. Who knows Wapane? Wapane. Who knows Jejerehiri? Anybody here knows Warungu, Zwarungu, Tinomsolko? Uh -huh. Those are the places I used to live. Those are the places. Today, I walk in high places all over the earth. Are you here? Recently, I had a former vice president, former president of a country. He was in Ghana. He came to spend some time with me. And I told him, you have to go and see the president because national security have informed him that you are here. He said, yes, yes, yes. And he went to see the president. And the president, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I came to see the archbishop for prayers. Are you hearing me? Very powerful man. He came here three days. He was with me for prayers. And you think I have the right to be offended? Hey, you, you have no right being offended. If God remove his grace from you, you are nothing. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, somebody.